Hi, how you doing? Hope you're keeping warm today. If it's cold where you are, as it is here. Uh, I've been still really thinking about the sociology things in it. What's good, what's bad. And I found something really good in here. Now I, can, I found something about Karl Marx that uh, Max Weber had had studied himself and wrote about Max Weber 1864 to 1920 <clears throat> very old fellow much of Max Weber's work was an attempt to clarify criticize and modify the works of Karl Marx he also studied the role of religion in the creation of new economic conditions and yes, they have a big, big part of the economic condition we're in today. And Karl Marx, I realized, was telling the truth that the churches don't want you to know, and the corporations. That's why they hate Karl Marx and try to discourage people from ever reading his stuff, mainly. And there's a little bit in here about it in this uh, introduction to sociology by Henry L. Tischler and I thought I'd read it to you to show you what they really don't want you to know. Max Weber thought of sociology as the study of social action. He differed from the other founders of sociology in a variety of ways. Herbert Spencer thought so society was similar to a living organism. Durkheim was concerned social cohesion in society. Marx believed the conflicts between social classes determined many things in society. In contrast, Max Weber's primary focus was on the individual meanings people attached to the world around them. In addition, much of Weber's work attempted to clarify, criticize, and modify the works of Marx. Therefore, we shall discuss Weber's ideas as they relate to and contrast with those of Marx. Unlike Marx, who was not only an intellectual striving to understand society, but also a revolutionary conspiring to overturn the capitalist social system, Weber was essentially a German academic attempting to understand human behavior. Weber believed the role of intellectuals were simply to describe and explain truth, whereas Marx believed the scholars should also tell people what to do. Marx believed the ownership of factories resulted in control of wealth, power, and ideas. And it does, doesn't it? Weber showed that economic control does not necessarily necessarily result in prestige and power. For example, the wealthy president of a chemical company whose toxic wastes have been responsible for the pollution of local water supply might have had little prestige in the community. Moreover, the company's board of directors might deprive the president of any real power. Although Marx maintained that the control of production and inevitably results in control of ideologies, Weber stated that the opposite may happen. Ideologies sometimes influence the economic system. Yes, it does. And all those churches have ideologies about economics. While Marx called religion an opium of the people, he was referring to the ability of those in control to create an ideology that would justify exploitation by those in power. Mm -hmm. Weber, however, showed that religion could be a belief system that contributed to the creation of new economic conditions and institutions. And I don't hear of any uh, warning their people about theft, which comes in one of God's commandments. In the Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, 1904-1905, to 1905, Weber tries, tried to demonstrate 
how the Protestant Reformation of the 17th century provided an ideology that gave religious justification to the pursuit of economic success through disciplined hard work. This ideology, called the Protestant ethic, ultimately helped transform Northern Europe societies from feudal agricultural communities into industrial capitalist societies. Understanding the development of bureaucracy interested Weber. Marx saw capitalism as the source of control, exploitation, and alienation of human beings and believed that socialism and communism would ultimately bring an end to this exploitation. Weber believed bureaucracy would characterize both socialist and capitalist societies. He anticipated and feared the domination of individuals by large bureaucratic structures. As he foresaw, bureaucracies now rule our modern industrial world, both capital and socialist, economic, political, military, educational, and religious. Given the existing situation, it is easy to appreciate Weber's anxiety. As he put it, each man becomes a little cog in the machine and aware of this, this one preoccupation is whether he can become a bigger cog. The problem which besets us now is not how can this evolution be changed, for that is impossible, but what will become of it? Quoted in Coser, 1977. And it looks like uh, they were able to get more truths out than people are able to today. And here's a picture of Max Weber, if you want to see him. I suggest you go around on the internet with the simple word of sociology and you find lots of them out there. I've just been floored by all the many there are. And they're kind of like Big Brothers that sells their info to people. So, I'm still bothered with all of this. But at least I'm finding some truth in it. And I have another story to tell later. And I'll add it with this one when I get it done. Y'all have a great day. And stay warm, or night, wherever you are, later. Hello, I'm back. How you doing? Now, I wanted to tell you a story that churches make me think of. I read this story. It's a, It was a short story, and I guess it was in a book full of short stories, and I can't remember the name of it at all. And I've even searched on the internet for it and can't find it anywhere. But it really stuck in my mind all this time, especially when I think of any churches. So I thought I wanted to tell my kids it. and I'll have to write them to tell them about it. But as it is, I'm going to tell it on here. Satan and the devil. Satan and the preacher. <laughs> Sorry. Satan and the Preacher is the name of it. Back in the old days, when there was the wild old west, and settlers were just getting their houses made and had very little to speak of for towns, they would send preachers out walking or riding a horse to go from town to town to do his preaching to the people that would go in a barn or some empty building they had to give them their his sermon. So okay, this this one preacher, he was there in a the town and he give them his sermon and it was getting late in the day and he picked up uh, all his tithe coins, gold coins, stuffed them in his little leather money bag, tied it up so tight and it was so full that it didn't even jingle. Oh, he was very happy. 
So one of the people came, guys came in and told him, well, preacher, there's a town like a, a mile or two from here. And they're really needing a preacher too. And there's as many well-to-do people there as there is here. Oh, he was so happy. Yeah, he gonna go. So he got ready in just a few minutes and pulled his hat down tight on his head against the blowing wind that was blowing through and started out down the road walking. Well, he started to go in through a foresty piece of road and the light was starting to fade pretty fast. It was kind of strange feeling out there and he quickened his step and was going faster. And all of a sudden, the devil appeared to him. Knocked him down so hard he went, went out like a light there for just a few seconds. And all of a sudden he came back to himself and looked up and a bright, strong, one of the strongest angels apparently that there is had suddenly appeared in this fiery light and was beating the hell out of the devil. He beat him so bad he was knocked on the ground and laying there moaning and groaning huffing and puffing for air and the angel disappeared. Well, the preacher got up and he walked over there and he looked down at him and he says, Well, you deserve that. And the devil said, Please, please bring me some water or I'm going to die. And the preacher looked at him and says, You deserve to die. You don't need to be on this earth. And the devil looked up at him and said, you feel that money bag in your pocket so full of coins? And the preacher immediately hand went to his pocket and he felt it. It was still there. He said, yeah. And that devil said, if I die and you don't have me to warn people about, then you ain't going to have no job no more like that to make that kind of money. I need a drink of water really bad. And the preacher stood there and looked at him for a few minutes and he slowly pulled off his hat and carried it over to the stream and scooped it full of water and brought it back to the devil. And that was that story. And it always reminds me of when I was very young. Me and my mom was with my dad. And he never talked about religion at all anyway. But one day he perked up and he turned around and said, I think I'm going to be a preacher and get me a church. I can make a lot of money on it. Me and my mom looked at him like, oh my God, he's insane. Fortunately, that thought went away. He didn't think about it anymore. Thank God. But, uh, it's pretty much of a metaphor kind of story. Kind of like fairy tales were made up for kids to learn about things going on, what they should and shouldn't do, and things like that. And this seemed to be the same kind of story to me. So I thought I'd tell my kids about it, and grandkids, and maybe they'd get the clue too. Y'all have a great night, or day, wherever you are. Later.